the Super Nintendo. Well, more accurately, this. The Mega Man Anniversary Collection. It's a compilation of the first eight Mega Man titles all in one neat little package. You can get it for the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox. So why am I looking at Mega Man 7 via this? Because an original copy of Mega Man 7 is fucking expensive. Look at this! No fucking way I'm paying that much for something I may or may not like to begin with. That and there hasn't been a digital re-release at the time of this review, so I'm pretty much stuck with this. So without further ado, let's plug this into my PlayStation 2 and see what the 16-bit world contains for the likes of the Mega Man. Johnny, how goes? Nathan, how did you get in my TV? Well, funny thing is, your Skype had a block on it for some odd reason, so I figured your TV would be the next best thing. You there. Yes, you with the silly hat. Are you talking to Johnny? Oh yeah, why? Tell him he's an asshole. Uh, hey John. Demonic looking box thing says you're an asshole. Lovely. Anyway, what's up? What's up? You're reviewing Mega Man 7, my favorite Mega Man game. Well, yeah, but why are you here? Oh. I'm joining you for this one. Why? Why not? Clement joined you for Mega Man 3. He forced himself into the review. There's a difference. Oh, come on, John, please. Do it for the Bearded Dragon. No. Well, too bad. I'm here to stay. Mega Man 7. The Blue Bomber's rather late jump into the Super Nintendo. 1995. Jeez, what the hell took so long? I'm gonna assume that everybody wasn't quite ready yet to jump ship into the Mega Man X series and wanted to saturate the needs of the classic Mega Man fans. I mean, just because you create a new series of Mega Man games doesn't mean you completely ignore its predecessor. So after the end of Mega Man 6, everyone's absolutely ecstatic that Mega Man finally apprehended Dr. Wily with the use of rope technology. Alright, lay it on me. Dr. Wily always knew that his plans would possibly end in failure and created a backup plan. Four robots Dr. Wily secretly built, I'm guessing during the downtime between Mega Man 3 and 4, were programmed to activate after no sign of Wily. Willy. Oh, sorry. After no sign from Dr. Willy. Are these robots of the stereotypical and racially insensitive types? Johnny, no one is going to get that. Sorry. Unlike the first six entries, Mega Man 7 begins with an intro stage, which sets up the story of Mega Man 7. Oh yeah, Roll's here. I sort of forgot about her, honestly. We're also introduced to another of Dr. Light's creations, Otto, who we'll get into later on. After a brief talk between the three, Mega Man suits up and is ready for action. Nah, that wouldn't work. Just mere seconds after starting the stage, Mega Man runs into Dr. Light, who's just lying there for some odd reason. Dr. Light then informs Mega Man that four robots are breaking Dr. Willy out of jail, even though nothing's really happened as of yet. Timing's a little off there, Light. Mega Man gives chase, where he runs into a new face in town, who immediately begins attacking Mega Man. You better tell me who you are? This is Bass, alongside his trusted companion, Treble. Oh, more musical references, I see. Bass tells Mega Man that he's also trying to stop Dr. Willy, completely unaware that Willy left about five minutes ago. Alright, can't say I wasn't expecting it, but Willy escaped and oh wow, there really are only four robots here. That's different. Well now this is pretty much what I expected, fancy smancy 16-bit graphics, more background layers, more fluid animations for both Mega Man and enemies, and finally updated music which is easy on the ears thanks to his choice of instruments. Though the entire soundtrack seems pretty underwhelming to me in its entirety. This is probably because I was already familiar with the likes of Mega Man X, another Super Nintendo title that had an incredibly awesome and absolutely rocking soundtrack, so I'm probably a bit spoiled here. Regardless, everything's here and accounted for, and I think it looks and sounds pretty good overall. When I first played this, I thought that Mega Man's overall sprite size was a bit on the big side, especially after playing six games before this, but after playing it for a bit, I can see that the level design is accustomed to the larger sprites, so it really isn't a big issue overall, it's just something you gotta adjust to. Starting with only four robots is a bit odd, admittedly, but I'm curious to see where this is going. Ooh, going Freeze Man first. Gotta start somewhere, I never really played this game before this review, so I have no idea where to- Holy shit, this guy has so many fucking attacks! Freeze Man jumps whenever you shoot at him, so use that to your advantage. Yeah, but that still doesn't negate the amount of shit he- Oh, Jesus, why did I pick this guy first? I can get him into a pattern with enough patience, but I wouldn't recommend choosing this guy for your first pick. What's with this letter? Are we collecting letters for a beat again? 
No, that's actually for Rush. But I already have Rush Coil and this new ability called Rush Search, which lets Rush use his nose to discover hidden goodies and power-ups. Located in the four stages are the letters that spell out Rush, and when you collect them all, you get access to the Super Adapter. Well, what does it do? You remember the power and jet adapters for Mega Man 6, right? Well, this is pretty much a combination of the two. Really? Oh, that's pretty cool. I take it you can't slide with it, though? Nah, you can't slide with it. But that really shouldn't be an issue altogether when you can fly over Oh, it. shit! Yep. Easy there, John. Don't let the added power go to your head, man. You can also use it to locate additional rush power-ups like Rush Jet and such. I'm surprised they decided to keep in things like Rush Jet when the Super Adapter just outshines it in almost every department. Sure, you may not locate all the rush plates on your first playthrough, but given that some plates are incredibly easy to locate, you'll most likely find the other plates just out of sheer curiosity alone. Rush Jet, you were fun while you lasted. Well, actually, you've been going downhill since Mega Man 3. But it looks like this is the end of it, my friend. Now get inside me. What do the bolts do? They're a currency for Otto's shop. Shop? What shop? I don't see anything. You press select on the controller when you're on the stage selection screen. Well, gee, thanks for not giving me an in-game explanation for that game. Well, the manual tells you about yeah, it. Yeah, the manual, but I don't exactly have one on me, do I? Anyway, with the bolts you collect inside stages, you can buy things from Auto, which include things like extra live, energy tanks, the works, really, and if you manage to locate Auto's hyperbolt later in the game, you can cut the prices of each item in half. Ooh, the birds from Mega Man 2 are back. I know what I'm doing for the next few minutes. Wait, what do you mean? Grinding for bolts. John, please just go. Not yet. Okay, I'm done. 688 bolts? Johnny, seriously? What? That's an easy four energy tanks, Nathan. And considering I can only carry four with me instead of nine like in the previous games, I need all the bolts I can get. That's just the way I am, ladies and gentlemen. If I know of an extremely convenient method of getting what this game considers money, I'd like to take some time to collect for a bit. It's not something I would seriously recommend, though, because this game so far is rather easy in terms of what Mega Man has to deal with. Once you get your first weapon, then the other robots start falling like a stack of dominoes. See, in this game, when you hit a robot with its weakness, it causes them to stagger, which resets their pattern. You see where this is going, right? Look at the fight with the likes of Cloudman and Junkman. This takes no effort whatsoever. And with that, the last of Willy's four robots are history. However, once all four robots are destroyed, Dr. Light and Mega Man discover that Dr. Willy is invading the Robot Museum. Robot Museum? Robot Museum. What the hell are things like these doing on display? I don't care if they're decommissioned and whatnot, you're just asking, begging, for someone to ransack this place and, yep, there goes Willy taking off with Guts Man. This guy has a serious hard on for Guts Man. You see statues of him in Mega Man 1, there's the Guts Dozer in Mega Man 2. You can't tell me that Gamma at least wasn't inspired by Guts Man's design. I think Willy's trying to tell us something here. Well, after battling this fat robotic. What's his name? The circus comes to town in the form of four more robot masters. Which, come on, we were all expecting. A Mega Man game just isn't a Mega Man game without eight robot masters in total. So, uh, who are you picking first? I was thinking this vampire looking one. Oh, oh, you should hold down the square button before picking it. Why, is it one of those secret Easter eggs or something like that? Johnny, you get to listen to the Ghosts and Goblins music. What do you... Johnny? I see that Mega Man 7 really likes its mini-bosses. If it's not a crab swimming in urine, it's a jack-o'-lantern that opens up a different pathway depending on how you kill it. Mega Man 7 in general is filled with things like that, and if you're of the explorative type, then it should be no problem. But sometimes the game expects you to get the common sense to just go through walls. Yeah, that was totally obvious. Oh look, Proto Man, haven't seen you since your extremely brief appearance in Mega Man 6. Did you collect the R, U, S, and H circuit plates yet? No. No need for the sarcasm. By the way, what do you think of my invisible coffee mug? When you locate enough secrets, you can actually fight Proto Man for his Proto Shield, and I'm glad to see he's evolved from the mindless jumping and shooting strategy you had in Mega Man 3. Mega Man 7 really encourages exploration. There's lots of stuff you can find to add to Mega Man's arsenal, like a homing rocket punch for the super adapter, or beat the bird located in Slash Man's stage. When you find Otto's Hyperbolt, you can just buy all these upgrades in case you don't feel like backtracking a whole lot. I do like how Mega Man 7 caters to two specific crowds. 
those who like to look everywhere and are rewarded for their curiosity, and those who just want to beat the game traditionally, but still have another means of getting equipped with the best gear. When it comes to Mega Man himself, everything still feels the same way it has in the previous games, so I'm happy to say nothing was really changed in terms of controls. I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it, you know? I see you're really digging some of the weapons Mega Man can obtain. Well, not all of them, mind you, but a good chunk of them. Thunderbolt, a simple name, but powerful shit. The Slash Claw is great too, and its short range allows me to be a little more accurate with it. Mega Man 7's track record with the weapons isn't the greatest in the series in my opinion, but it's good enough for me. Soon enough, Mega Man will come across an injured looking- Hey! Language base! Mega Man tells Base to head over to Dr. Light for repairs, where I'm sure nothing bad will possibly- Ah, oh, damn it. Base was actually created by Dr. Willy and wrecked Dr. Light's lab. What's funny about this is that this cutscene immediately follows after Mega Man gets his new weapon from the last Robot Master. So it looks like Mega Man leaves for a few seconds, comes back, and then the lab suddenly looks like utter shit. That was only three seconds- Don't judge me. It's time for another round with Willy's Fortress stages. However, things are a little different this time. You don't actually tackle all the stages in a row like the previous games. No, every time you complete a fortress level, you're taken back to the stage selection screen where you can then take a trip to auto shop and refill on energy tanks and whatever else you need. Also, since there's no longer a gauntlet, your weapon energy also completely refills between each stage, so you shouldn't be starving for energy by the time you get to this game's boss rush and the final boss with Willy. It's a nice relaxer after the past four games making you do twice the normal amount of fortress stages. The fights with base were a nice touch, and going head-to-head -head with the adapters is pretty fun. This boss annoys the shit out of me, if only because I swear the moving floor makes me do shit I didn't intend on doing. There, why did I slide there? I was hitting the jump button, damn it! I swear to god. Well, that just leaves Willy. Hope you're ready for him. Nathan, I've played six Mega Man games at this point. I think I can handle another Willy. That... Sounds. I will say, I like how this boss looks and moves, but Thunderbolt makes him a total pussy. However, I know how things roll at this point, this isn't the final form, and sure enough, Willy's inside another one of those capsule things, and oh shit! Wait, wait, ah! Okay, okay, there we go, Whew. It's all in the timing, Johnny. Well, this is certainly a jump in difficulty, but I don't think it's that challenging. I mean, at this point, I already played the classic Castlevania series, Mario 2 The Lost Level, Super Meat Boy, Zelda 2... Ghosts and Goblins? <laughs> Here's the thing. If you stocked up an auto shop before heading here, you're gonna win this battle. You're gonna get hurt. A lot, actually, especially if you don't time your jumps well enough. But this isn't what I would call impossible. <laughs> Okay, Mega Man, he's down once more. Now whip out that majestic rope of yours and... Or you can just straight up kill the bastard. God damn, has the past six games finally taken a toll on the blue bomber? Don't read too into it, Johnny. The whole Mega Man telling Willy to die was added for the American version of Mega Man 7. I guess as a means to make Mega Man look hardcore. In the Japanese version, Mega Man stops his actions completely when Willy reminds him that robots cannot harm a human being. So what, you're telling me that Mega Man inflicted no harm to Willy at all during the last six encounters? That's just straight up bullshit. Well, in the end, Bay swoops in to save Willy from impending doom, leaving Mega Man alone to escape the crumbling- Wait a minute! The walking sequence isn't in the anniversary collection. John, have you been using an emulator this entire time? Nathan, have you seen the ending of the anniversary edition of Mega Man 7? It's just this empty, soulless, boring black background with the most generic looking text you've ever seen in a video game. In the original, you got this awesome, satisfying, badass walk cycle of Mega Man leaving behind the burning Willy Fortress. Sure, in the end, Willy got away, but this looks awesome. Now, are you gonna give me final thoughts or not? My ass is starting to chafe. Overall, Mega Man 7 has continued to be my favorite classic Mega Man game and favorite Mega Man game entirely. It took the leap into the 16-bit era and has continued to impress me still. Sure, there are some rehashed ideas here and there, but the game is paying homage to its predecessor, just with updated graphics. It's still my favorite title in the series, and I'm even still learning things about it in today's day and age. I'll admit, when I first played this game, I wasn't that impressed at first. The updated graphics and sound were a pleasure to both the eyes and ears, but it wasn't anything I haven't seen before, I felt. However, after playing through it once more for recording footage and once again in the Anniversary Collection, there's something about Mega Man 7 that I grew more fond of after playing it multiple times. It definitely has a charm that I find other games in the series don't have. Whether or not it's because of how it's designed overall or the update it looks thanks to Super Nintendo, I'm not entirely sure as of now, but Mega Man 7 is a good game overall. From what I've played so far, Mega Man 7 ranks just a tad behind Mega Man 6, 3, and finally 2. Until it gets a digital release, however, the only way you're playing this on the cheap is via the Anniversary Collection, unless you like spending this kind of money on a Super Nintendo cartridge, or, you know, you can use an emulator. It's not like anything stopping you from doing so. So... John, what was the demonic-looking box thing that called you an asshole? I think you would know more than anybody, Nathan. It's the- wait, why do you ask? Because it just left in a flash of light, laughing maniacally. 
Think hijacking your TV was a good idea? No, Nathan, it wasn't. Great, man, I gotta deal with him too. Well, he's been inside there for so long, we don't have to worry about him. Anyway, guys, for next week, I'll see you with Nick Man 8. And Nathan? Yeah, John? Get the hell out of my TV. Will do, Johnny. Okay, the hell?